hi, Celine. As soon as I hit go, Celine jumps up here. All right. Hello, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here and you don't know my face, my name is Stephanie Jean, and this is my channel where I like to talk about stuff on the internet. Today we are joined by the lovely Krista. Krista over there. <laughs> Um, and we are discussing Mawage. Mawage is what brings us together today. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. So we're talking about how things may or may not change once you're married. Mm -hmm. um, so let's start off with how long have we been married? Not to each other. <laughs> Disclaimer. <laughs> Chris, how long have you and Mark been married? Two years. Two years. Two, two years. years. Yeah, two years. Wow. It kind of feels like it's been longer than that. Oh, I mean, we've practically been married since 2015. Yeah, that's like. true. That's true. Um, and I've only been married, like, Is that a year. It's almost two years for me, though. Yeah, like, my wedding was in February, but we got married in August before that. Like, we got married in August of 2018. Yeah, so it's almost two years. years. Wow. So you've almost been three years. No, I got married April 2018. Oh, dang, that's right. Oh, that's so yeah. weird. Wow, we got married really close to each other. <laughs> I did not even notice that. Um, partially, I guess, because my wedding was six months after we had gotten married. <laughs> um, ah. What happened? My, um, I've been using metal straws and my sodas, and it started to overflow. Ah. <laughs> out of the straw. Um, so how long were you together before getting married was the, the next question. So you had said that you and Mark were basically married since 2015. Why not? You want to give a little like back cover version of the story? <laughs> we started dating. Well, we started working together. We clicked instantly. We started dating in November of 2014. I moved in. I all but moved in, and by January, by March, I was officially moved in. And about then is when we March of 2015, and that's about when we started talking about getting married. And then it took us three years, three years and a month <laughs> to get married. Nice. <laughs> long story short short not short um if you haven't heard the story on my channel before which are like two or three instances where i've told my story with jacob uh so we knew each other in high school he was in love with me i told him no um <laughs> and then like five years later we started talking again and it was like we never had stopped talking and i was like oh shit i'm in love with him too um crap and then uh, we started dating, and then he proposed, and we got married, like, super, super quick. <laughs> military time, quick. <laughs> Things happen fast in the military. Yeah, we got married faster than most military couples, most Christians, and most lesbians move in together. Like, we got married so quick. <laughs> but it's, like, it's fine, because we knew each other for a few years first, so. It's fine. Right? The, the background's there. You didn't yeah. just meet. Yeah. So, like, before we got married, right, we had known each other for a while, but we didn't move in together until after we had gotten, like, legally married, which was, like, two months before our wedding is when we moved in together. Because we moved in, we got the apartment in November of 2018. But he was gone for a training thing, so he didn't even get back until, like, December of 2018. And we got married in February of 2019. Connor, can you stop? Okay. <laughs> I uh, out. Yeah, I was going to do that, but then they cry. So They've got Mark in the other room. Yeah, Jacob's gone, so they just have me. <laughs> um. So what was life like pre-marriage and has marriage, how has marriage changed it for better or worse? Specifically talking about, um, uh, like, I want to also make sure that we talk about, like, identity. Like, we both went through a phase of, like, finding ourselves. 
um, when we moved in with slash married our partner. Um, and I think that that for both of us was kind of like the dating phase. Um, well, mostly for you, it was like the dating phase. Like you and Mark weren't like exactly engaged yet. I don't think when you remember like you were going through like a lot of retail therapy and I, when I moved down here because he wasn't down here, I went through like a different kind of finding myself situation. Like, do you want to talk about yours first? Well, when I moved, I, I moved out in December of 2014. Um, that was first, I, I went to college in the town I lived in and my parents, the town my parents lived in. So like, there was no like, when you go to college for a lot of people, that's like the time where you find yourself and you really learn who you are. And I didn't have that. So I moved out and then I moved in with him almost immediately because I wasn't living in the best neighborhood. But I moved into a house where there was already five, six other people. So that made seven total. Great rent. But it it just, we really, it was both <laughs> Life in California. <laughs> it, it, it was just a normal bedroom like you're not we didn't even have a master when I first moved in it was just it was a really small room and it was all his stuff and it just felt very him I did a lot more shopping than I care to admit but it got better as we moved from that bedroom to the master and we got to I got to I can't really say we because he does not really have the decorator touch <laughs> to <laughs> buy stuff to make the room more I want to say I want to say more us, but it was really more me because he was like, oh, I don't, I don't care, you know. If it mm -hmm. looks good, I'm, I'm happy. So it, it just, it took a lot of spending to find out that I had changes to make that I, I might not have been entirely ready to move out, but it was better that I moved out when I did because I learned that I'm not the most careful with my money, but I am happier with the freedom to make my choices. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the big thing I needed to learn about myself is that I am capable of making choices and I am capable of owning up to my mistakes. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't have learned that if I moved out right after I got married. I think it would have taken a total different toll on the relationship. I don't think it would be like it is now. Mm -hmm. You know, I had we had to learn to make those mistakes. And I do respect the opinion that, you know, don't get don't move in till you move in I mean don't move in together till you get married and like I can respect that opinion yeah that's just not how we that's not how we did it and I think just with <laughs> my personnel yeah I don't know what that was I, I assumed it was just a normal everyday noise uh I don't know if it was a pew pew or a pew We've been having a lot of fireworks go on. Yeah. I don't like it. It is not the 4th of July. It is not it's the middle days. of the day, though. And yeah. we haven't had a lot of fireworks. So, anyway, moving on. <laughs> what was I saying? Do uh, you respect oh. the idea of not moving in together before you get married? I think for my particular personality type, I... I don't, I, I don't know how to best describe it, but pretty much like I like my alone time at very specific times, but then like you can flip a switch and I, I want to be with people. I mm -hmm. learned how to work through that with somebody else. Yeah. Um, and we both got, and he can, Mark can be like that too. We both got to learn and figure out if that's the kind of person we wanted to be around all the time. And we got, I got to learn, which I, I personally, I think there are circumstances where divorce is okay, but I personally don't believe in divorce as like a cop out or a, mm -hmm. we don't get along, you know, let's separate. We got to learn before, before we got married, when it was just breaking up and there wasn't a kid involved and yeah, our pets, which are pretty much our kids, if we could work it out and if we could learn when to tell each other, hey not right now this is nothing personal i just need me i just need to be angry for a little bit or i just need to be upset for a little bit but mm -hmm. and a lot of that hasn't changed after marriage it just became easier because there wasn't tension we knew how to deal with that stuff yeah um 
yeah, that whole like communication of like where you are emotionally. Like sometimes, like when Jacob and I first um, were living together, like we were already married, right? And it's not because we didn't want to live together before we got married. Like we would have if we could have, but because he's in the military, that's not really an option. <laughs> like if you're in the military, you can't live off base unless you're married and you can't have other people live on base unless you're married to them um, or they're that. your kids so yeah, like my parents, my parents talked about that a lot because my my dad was in the military and yeah. it was like you could stay a night or two off base if you weren't their version of on call but like you were pretty much that was your life until mm -hmm. you get married yeah which is like a joke with like service members you know like oh you just got married so you could get out out of the barracks and you know you your wife just married you so she could get bah and tricare which is the uh bah for anyone who doesn't know is uh <laughs> i don't remember what the acronym stands for i want to say base assisted housing but i don't think that's what it is um but it's basically like a pay raise like you get a pay raise when you get married and you get a pay raise when you have kids and um TRICARE is the health insurance. So people make jokes all the time that, oh, service members get married really fast so they can get out of the barracks. And then what's in it for the other person is that they get health insurance and BAH. So um, in my defense, I honestly did not know about BAH and TRICARE until like a month after we had gotten married. <laughs> yeah, I, I miss that stuff. <laughs> And it was just, so it's kind of funny, um, like, when I first was on some of the wives pages for Camp Pendleton, like, I hadn't put in my, like, Facebook page that I was married to Jacob yet. It still said engaged because technically we had eloped. And because we were still having a wedding, my parents were like, oh, we can't have anybody know that you're already married or else nobody's going to come to the wedding. Like, the wedding's just a show now and it's not, like, legitimate. And I was like, but okay. But that's what weddings are right That's all they're just shows like we we kind of did well the only reason we didn't elope <coughs> sorry ow <coughs> was the original date that we wanted to have a wedding was like our perfect time and but we were like it was I want to say like January but you know and we still planned on having a wedding but it was like what are we going to do when it comes to our anniversary? And we're in January, we're like, happy anniversary. And people are like, wait, we went to your wedding at the end mm -hmm. of April. Yeah. And like, that's kind of something that like already, <laughs> even though Jacob and I have only had one anniversary, um, it's still cool though. Like, especially because our anniversaries are six months apart, you know, like we have our marriage anniversary and our wedding anniversary and our marriage anniversary gets to be something where we do something for us. And then our wedding anniversary is for other people. You know, like if they want to celebrate our wedding or whatever, then they can do whatever. But I like having two anniversaries because I don't know, I guess I'm lame. But I, I think it's great, especially because they're perfectly six months apart. Like August 18th and then February 23rd are like six months and a week apart. So it's like just kiss we got we got married almost exactly six months from what our anniversary is we're november 2014 mm -hmm. we i mean we don't go well we kind of do like um we had a baby um april 11th of 2019 just 17 days before our one year anniversary so like we still <clears throat> celebrated our mm -hmm. anniversary but like when he gets older and he starts to remember birthdays like we didn't only reason we didn't do a birthday party this year was coronavirus and no one being allowed to be together. But as the, as he's <laughs> older, <clears throat> we're going to start, you know, any anniversary trips will be at our November um, anniversary date because yeah. Jason still gets his time. We still have our time. Like we have two anniversary dates. We'll just, I mean, we'll, we'll just, I like to celebrate the the dating one because that's five years nope six six years this year so mm. i just like to celebrate yeah i mean more days to celebrate why not i mean jacob gets annoyed because um he sucks at remembering dates he remembers oh, our two anniversaries and my birthday 
and that's like it he like i'm gonna publicly shame him but he doesn't remember his siblings birthdays his parents birthdays his best friend's birthdays (laughs) he only remembers our anniversaries and my birthday because they're in a lot of our passwords for things (laughs) I'm pretty sure that's the reason I picked up so fast on Mark's birthday. <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm terrible with dates in general. So it, it's nothing to do with like that I don't care. I'm just, I'm, I'm terrible with it. I can't. <laughs> I, I'm pretty good at it. Um, I have a note actually, like, you know how like on iPhone and um, on like your con contact you can have like notes in there i have notes with birthdays the ones that i i I like well like you can actually put like their their birthday as an option um in there and then in our in the notes under jacob's contact back in 2014 i put date to my senior prom with like the star emoji for 27 2014 and then i put first kiss and then i put proposal legally married vows on the beach and then i do in the wedding service so like i have all those dates in there so if i need to reference them they're right there i got it um and that's the other thing like technically we had three weddings <laughs> because we had the you know the one where we got legally married in the like court or whatever um, and then because we were living together and my my parents really wanted us to get married in the church that I grew up in, even though I'm like not part of the church anymore and he's atheist. So like, <laughs> whatever. Uh, but it was really important to my parents that we got married in the church, right? So my pastor who was doing the wedding cer- ceremony was like, you can't live together if you haven't exchanged vows. Like, I know you guys are married on paper, but if you haven't exchanged vows, it doesn't count. And I'm like okay so we met up with the chaplain of his company and it was raining like uh, like a soft drizzle and we were on the beach under this like gazebo that's just like there and it was just the three of us and he was like so this is weird but i mean i got the email from your pastor if you guys have your vows like you could say it and we're like cool (laughs) and honestly that felt more like a wedding to me than our actual wedding ceremony did it's really it's not about having all the people there and it's not about it's the only like I'm, I'm convinced the only reason we had an actual wedding was for the party yeah like i'm like well, i didn't even have fine. a party we would have that that's just it that's mark's family though like they are they're they love to celebrate like they're, they're when i say they love to party i don't mean they love to just go and get like shit face and stuff but like they just they love to celebrate each other and the high and the lows are always there so yeah. I'm, I'm convinced that's the main reason we had a wedding and i mean mm-hmm. and we both always wanted to have a wedding but like we would have been fine just us two and one or two maybe three other people yeah get married in a courthouse or doing something really small somewhere and we yeah. would have been okay with that yeah that's like if i could go back I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't get married in the church because it just didn't matter to me at all to get married in the church, really. It just was my mom's dream since I was little. And because of, because of me and Jacob getting engaged so quickly and Jacob, (laughs) I love him. Um, (laughs) He didn't think that people actually had to ask for parents permission because like you don't have to ask, right? Um, but my parents were so offended and are still so offended that he didn't ask them. And he was like, I didn't think people still did that. And I'm like, I'm not mad about it. (laughs) But because of that, like my parents guilt tripped me into basically having whatever they wanted for the wedding. Um, which, you know, whatever. I like the pictures. Honestly, if it was just like our bridal party and us that would be lit (laughs) i i had to finally put my foot down with my mom and be like hey i know that you guys are helping like we we diy'd almost everything at the wedding and i kind of eventually had to put my foot down because my mom was like well let's do this and this and this and this and eventually because i'd I'd go home and i'd complain to mark i'd be like this and this and eventually i was like you know i appreciate where you're coming from but there's also things that i love and i want 
mm-hmm. you can do x y and z but that's that's hard for me to do we didn't yeah. ask either mark didn't ask permission i was just like hey but you guys were married. together for a while like you guys were an established couple for a while yeah, Jacob well, and I were my not. parents <laughs> my parents are very like old-fashioned in that way they really mm-hmm. would have they would have preferred yeah um mark asking permission so because like when we told my dad oh hey we're getting married my dad was like are you are you really and I was mm-hmm. like can we get married can I marry Mark and my dad was like I like him so yeah so like I I know my parents were like upset and I knew that um instead of being like hey we've got this whole wedding planned we we, we did have a family tragedy which I think is one of the main reasons that I did go and um tell my parents like I did how I did mm-hmm. um and give them such an involved like yeah aspect to it um but i i think they definitely would have been very my parents would have been the same way very offended if i did not even we we had a family tragedy a a death in the family um like immediately after we got engaged and then immediately before the wedding and like (laughs) (sighs) Yeah, my parents are just really into the guilt trips, man. Like, like apparently I was stealing something from my mom because I wanted to go look for a wedding dress. I I, I feel like part of me, because I, I looked for my wedding dress before I really told anybody. I kind of feel guilty that I didn't take my mom. Like, I, but at the time, <clears throat> I did not have the best relationship with my mom. Yeah. We were we didn't really get along. It took me having Jason and kind of lashing things out there to kind of get to a good spot. Yeah. But I think if I could go back, I would have my mom a little more involved in the beginning process. Well, because, like, I wanted them to be involved, and so I tried to talk to them about things, like these are the colors I was thinking. This was this that I was thinking. And then it would turn into, well, we don't care about that. We just want like the, you know, the details. And I'm like, these are the details? Yeah. (laughs) Like, this is the date I want. Well, we don't care. We just need to know how much it's going to be. And then they ended up paying for the revenue. Revenue? Is that the word I'm looking for? The video? Venue, thank you. <laughs> they paid for the venue, which, like, I didn't want to have that venue anyway, so, like, cool. Um, and everything else Jacob and I paid for. But they still wanted to have, like, such heavy opinions on it. And whenever I tried to voice my opinion or if I cared about it and wanted something different, then I would be a bridezilla immediately. I, I was like... Hold on. Y'all picked where I'm getting married. When I'm getting married wasn't even up to me. That's up to the Marine Corps because, like, Jacob's schedule. And you picked my wedding dress. And you're picking whether or not I have food at the wedding. And you're picking how many people I can invite. And you're picking how many blah, 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 blah. You know, like, I just want to have this color in my bouquet. And that made me a bridezilla. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> just because I wanted to have pink in my bouquet. Like, I was saying, like, ideally, like, my dream wedding, I would want to have succulents and pink roses in my bouquet, but succulents are really expensive, so I'm cool if we don't do that. And they were like, well, why are you demanding that we pay all this for succulents? I'm like, I'm not. We ended up, because I was very specific on my flowers, I wanted sunflowers. Mm-hmm. Um, I really wanted sunflowers, and... um my mom was like, well, sunflowers are expensive, you know? And I was like, you know what? Don't worry about the flowers. Mark and I will get our flowers. Yeah. I just, um, you know, we, we had actually planned to my bouquet, the bridal party and the, well, no, we're, we're all the bridal party guys mm-hmm. and girls, um, like buying them all. My mom ended up making, um, with, um, it's like fake flowers. She ended up making the boutonnieres and the bridal party, excluding Mark and I, she made their, their flower arrangements and yeah. the flower arrangements for the tables. So she did save us a lot of money, but like beforehand, I had we had a we had our guest list. We had we had almost everything decided. Photographer, mm-hmm. um, everything beforehand because I did know that 
not only would it cause a strain between me and my parents, it would cause a strain between Mark and I because with all the arguing that could have gone on, we would have been yeah, venting to each other. Yeah. And it, at least you had Mark with you for most of it. Like planning my wedding was so frustrating <laughs> because Jacob, for most of our engagement, was either gone in a training thing where I couldn't talk to him or he was just hours <laughs> away down here and I was still up there in Bakersfield. So like most of the wedding planning was just up to me to try and figure out which is a lot <laughs> yeah um because it's not that he didn't care but he just couldn't be involved like we didn't have the time for that and we wanted to make sure that we had the wedding we, we even though we had eloped right like in the eyes of god we had to have our wedding before he deployed otherwise like like we had to elope before he deployed. That way we could get everything set up for when he was gone. I would have a place to live. I would have everything set up, you know? I would have yep. my my uh, dependent ID. But then, like, two days before the wedding, my uncle passes away. And my parents are like, you have to reschedule the wedding. And I'm like, I can't. <laughs> yeah. He's got family that's flown from really far away that's already down here like i'm not gonna do that and my mom's like well just wait a year uh, no <laughs> she's like just send out a letter to everybody that you eloped and i'm like wait why are we changing the narrative i thought you didn't want anyone to know that we eloped hold on <laughs> i thought you know that that argument was made a few times for to me for mark and i not necessarily from my parents, but just from other people that maybe we should put it off a year because the year that we got married and we planned our wedding um, was when I first officially was diagnosed with, saying diagnosed, it sounds so negative. Um, I was first officially diagnosed with anxiety mm -hmm. um, like because it, it was severe enough to stop me from really functioning during the day. Um, I was doing my master's um, yeah. all in a year, a two and a half year program. I did it in a year. And I think I said it was my first year teaching um, a class of 32 yeah. kindergartners. And was, it was like Mark's last year of college. Yeah, Mark's last year of college. Like, it, it, it was crazy. And the school that I taught at was a super involved school, such a super tiny school that even though I was the kindergarten teacher, I was also, we had to pick up the pieces well, that makes it sound broken, but to, we had to wear a lot of hats to do a lot of things because we just didn't have a lot of people. And so there was all of that. And then I was still trying to plan a wedding and have a yeah. social life. But also I was trying to boost that GPA and mm -hmm. I was thinking about, um, um, what do you call it? I was thinking about getting, um, applying to an EDD program and I knew that I had other classes that I had to take and so there was all this stuff and people were like just wait you know get through your first year teaching the first year is the hardest because you have your induction yeah. and this and this and maybe maybe I would have done it earlier I think if the only thing I would change about the timing is maybe a year earlier I don't I wouldn't want to push it out a year yeah I <clears throat> I don't know waiting Especially because, like, I guess this this is dramatic, right? And um, at times I'm like, yeah, that's totally valid. And at other times I'm like, wow, you're being so dramatic. Stop it. <laughs> um, but because he's in the military and we never know, we never know if he's going to get sent somewhere. You know, if something's going to happen. If suddenly we're at war. If suddenly, you know, like he... Sorry, I had a shiver. Um but you know how, like, the first, first, first Charlie company, you know, like, if, if something happens, he's on, like, the second flight out, if not the first flight. And because of the political tensions at the time, I, mm, no, I'm not going to wait. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, we don't know <clears throat> how much time we have together. So Sometimes. why would I wait <clears throat> a year? Why would I wait a whole freaking year 
that sounds so dumb to me. Like I get it from, from my parents' perspective or even like my, my advisor in college. Like I wasn't done with my degree yet. I'm still not done with my degree because I got married and I moved down here. And they were like, just wait till you graduate. And the thing is, is that I was struggling in school already. You know, I, I didn't want to be there. I felt aimless. Um, I had, I didn't have a reason to do well, you know, um, which sounds dumb, but that's just how, no, I, this is I how my that. depression works, I guess. Um, so I really needed the time off of school. I really needed to get away from Bakersfield and get away from like all this trauma and everything that was just like existing there for me. Um, but now I'm ready to go back to school <laughs> and finish like my, my like one year that I have left. Uh, but I gladly accept you back up here in Bakersfield. <laughs> Thank. <laughs> Um, I need more friends. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's just like, I guess that's one way, like if we want to talk about how careers have impacted our relationships, you know, like that's, that's a big one. Like we had to adjust our marriage slash wedding to accommodate the marine corps because the marine corps will not accommodate us like that's just not how that works um at the end of the day and like th this sounds terrible to a lot of people i know at the end of the day um and uh, disclaimer this does not tell everything about how i feel about marriage mm -hmm. at the end of the day getting married is really just a business agreement um because one of the reasons that we didn't get married while I was finishing my credential, but we didn't wait um, longer to get the perfect date that we wanted in the perfect location that we wanted was insurance. And the bit of a pay raise I'd have because I'd have a dependent on my paychecks and stuff like that. Yep. Um, it, Which is it, something that people financial... don't really talk about and when they're talking about weddings and stuff. Like people talk about you know, your cake and your flowers, but you don't really talk about like the insurance, careers, housing, uh, liability, car insurance, even like stuff. if you're driving each other's cars, you know, like it's he couldn't even drive my car. Yeah, when Jacob, my Jacob's car, not supposed to be driving. Well, he wasn't supposed to be driving my car. He can now, but he wasn't supposed to be when we got <laughs> when when, <clears throat> when I bought my car, um, the insurance would have just because of our ages and the fact that we weren't married. Mm -hmm. um, and I did have a bit of a driving record. Um, two very minor accidents. Um, <laughs> you want to talk about driving records? <laughs> well, I, disclaiming, no, no DUIs or anything, but just mm -hmm. two minor accidents. Yeah, like fender bendies. Um, yeah, <clears throat> there we go. Couldn't think of that. Um, <laughs> um, it, the insurance would have tripled just based off of her age and everything. So not, I could not just say, oh, no, you know, I don't want to add him to the insurance. I had to exclude him. Yeah, then. because you live and together. Yeah. Yeah. So I um, I didn't have to exclude my roommates, but because there was a relationship between Mark and I, because my roommates were on our renter's insurance, which mm -hmm. the amount of people didn't change the price of it. So I was like, yeah, let's add everybody to it, because if it's not going to change the price, why, why do I care? But yeah. There was, I think it was because there was a relationship with Mark that the insurance would have spiked. So he couldn't even mm. drive my car. And we wow. had my car. And then we had Philip, who is a 1983 Toyota pickup <laughs> that has a lot of issues. Like, no, nope. no AC. <laughs> no AC. Um, the, the driver's side window didn't roll down. We live in Bakersfield. Like, it's just not plausible to drive that car around all the time. Yeah, went, especially in summer. So, you know, there's just a lot of stuff that just the ease of life, um, mm -hmm. insurance, money, like it just made things easier. It, it mm -hmm. was a business agreement at the end of the day, um, but it just it made life easier, especially once Mark graduated. Finance was one of the hardest things to find a job in. It yeah. took him a while to find a job in finance. He still he didn't go jobless. He just <clears throat> it took him a year to find a job in his degree. Yeah. 
and that's not his fault it just that's how things work and so that extra money I was making being married to him helped definitely um yeah I'm hmm. it's weird finances and relationships and I talked about this a little bit in my it was in my last video was it the video before that talking about uh supporting your partner in relationships and i was talking more about like supporting somebody uh in their goals and their dreams was that that video you know i don't remember what video it was but one of the recent videos i've been making so many freaking videos lately um i talked about how sometimes i struggle with the fact that i am not contributing financially as much as my husband is um and it's not to say that there's anything wrong with that, but because of how I was raised and being raised in an environment where I was learning that my value comes from what I bring to the table. My value comes from what I can do, what I provide. My, you know, resume is my value. My income is my value. Um, that that's kind of been something I've had to unlearn, not only in my marriage but also in therapy like i'm like <laughs> what is my value well it's not my paycheck <laughs> and that's okay um and because Sorry. and you can talk about this too with you know you and mark's careers and having a kid but because it's just me and jacob because he makes the money that we live off of and i work part-time granted it's in my field granted it's a job that i love and if i could work it more often i would um, I, I was working two jobs at a point, uh, while he was deployed this last deployment, um, just to keep myself busy. Cause I was super like lonely all the time. Um, I was working two jobs, but it was kind of killing me cause I was working like 60 hour weeks at times. And I quit the second job. Uh, and now I'm just working part-time at one job. It's not a lot of money, you know, it's less than the state minimum wage even because we only have like three employees. So it's not like the, I don't know, like if everybody's getting paid $13, I'm getting paid like 12 um, because that's how the the regulations or whatever go. Um, but even though I love my job, even though it doesn't make as much money and it's not providing as much as Jacob's job does, just our work schedules being like complete opposites. Like he, when he's home, he leaves at like five in the morning sometimes, six in the morning, comes home at like four in the afternoon. I leave for work at like six in the evening, five in the evening and come home at like midnight, <laughs> you know? Like, so sometimes it's like, we just don't even see each other because he'll go to bed at like 10 and I won't be home yet. You know, we'll get like, uh, half-hearted like I'm kind of not even conscious as he's leaving for work in the morning as he kisses me goodbye and I go oh yeah and I pass out <laughs> um so like work schedules and workloads has uh, a weight on relationships um and with the military because he's often gone for training often gone on deployments that last six months and people always ask if I can go on deployments with him and no you can't. If he was stationed somewhere, I could. Deployed, I can't. You went away for a second. Um, but that's that's the military. phone call, part. and then it all just froze. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, so, Krista, can you enlighten us on how the work schedule of being a teacher uh, with Mark working in finance and then also having a kid impacts the, re the relationship? So, well, to, to begin with, because he, he no longer works in a job in finance. And prior to the job in finance, he worked as a car salesman, which he absolutely loved. The tough part was it was largely a commission-based job. And the schedule <clears throat> switched every other day. I never thought of muting myself earlier when I was, like, dying. Um, train of thought. I'm, I'm so easily distracted. Um, he would work either, well, he'd work every other day. Um, and he'd work either morning open or close. And then 
um, I can't remember how it was set. And he could have Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. Or he'd work Friday, Saturday, Sunday, open to close, all, all of that. And that that was tough. And that's why I was pregnant. And I had a really rough pregnancy. I spent the first half of my pregnancy with severe morning sickness. And then I was put on bed rest about a month before I had JJ because I had such severe swelling. Um, turns out I had severe preeclampsia. I was anemic and I had all these other problems go on. And so that really, that was tough because at a time when I needed somebody the most, and I don't, this isn't ragging on Mark at all. Like he had a job that he enjoyed because that, to us, that's what mattered. I didn't yeah. make the most, I no longer teach at my old school, but I didn't make the most money. I made some of the least amount of money in the county as far as a teacher goes, but I loved my job and that's what mattered to us. But um, while pregnant, it, it was really hard because he didn't go to work. You know, he didn't really have sick days until he worked there a year. So he didn't go to work because I needed him. We were missing out on money. Yeah. And then shortly before I had JJ, a month before I was put on the bed rest, he started working solar, only commission based. That made things really hard. But again, trying to find something that makes him happy because at the end of the day, I think that's what matters. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, financially, and that might that be wasn't... irresponsible of us, and that might just be like an our generation thing that the generation before us would say, "Oh, it's so irresponsible." But if you have a job you hate, doesn't matter how much you're getting paid because you hate your existence. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then there's also um, I have a stable job. Like mm-hmm. I don't work at my other teaching job, but I do. I got a new one. I have a stable job. Um, yeah. Jacob well, has. A stable job so as long as one of us has a stable job I think it's okay my mom ran an in-home daycare which can be really difficult to start up but my dad had a stable job my dad was mm-hmm. in the military so as long as there's one person who can provide and yeah. the other person if the person who is providing um for some reason can't the- as long as the other person is willing to do what it takes to pick up the slack if the if slack happens, mm-hmm. I think that's what matters. So when possible, I think it's whatever makes Mark happy. Mm-hmm. But the solar wasn't working out, so he got his job in finance. And that was a job that he loved and because he, he liked working with people. But it brought a lot of tension, a lot of tension. So he, he loved his job. It made great money, but it was commission-based. I felt like he was constantly working. If I normally when I was at work is when he would be his freest because other people are at work. A lot of his work would be more considered like after hours kind of work. So that yeah. that put more of an emotional and mental strain on us. And so he quit that job to look for another job. And him not having a job that that's I think that saved things because he wasn't stressed all the time and now he has another job he works 40 hours a week every week he he works Saturdays and Sundays and he has Mondays and Tuesdays off so he doesn't have the same traditional schedule that I have but he starts at 7 a.m he gets off at 4 Mm -hmm. while we are on quarantine because he can work from home that's the best part about this job he can work from home and it's consistent hours um while we're on quarantine i get to have lunch with him i get to spend his breaks with him yeah once i get off of isolation (laughs) i can be around people (laughs) but like it he you know we we saw a need we saw a thing that we wanted that we are striving towards so it wasn't exactly the job he wanted but it was something that he he enjoys working with people. He enjoys customer service. And he's doing exactly that. And he we want to move into a house. So mm-hmm. we have all these sacrifices to make, you know, we're not exactly happy in the job. Um, I was driving almost an hour to work at one point. And then you add a kid into that. And yeah, there is a tax break that comes with that. 
that's not why we had a kid. But yeah. That does help financially, but kids are expensive. Mm hmm. And that. Do you feel. We love JJ. Do you feel like but... you should have waited to have I a can't kid? Hear you. Oh, am I still muted? No, I'm not muted. I don't think I'm muted. Hold on. Um... Can you hear me now? Here, hold it. Holding. Try again. Can you hear me now? No. That's so weird. <laughs> That's weird. I don't know what you're saying. Ah! Hold on. One second. Can you hear me now? <laughs> I can hear you now. Okay. Um, I was asking, do you feel like you should have... That's the wrong way to phrase this question. Would you advise people to wait a certain amount of time before having a kid? There is no right time. <laughs> I'm going to answer that. There is no right time. But I think I don't really recommend waiting. Well, we dated for a long time before we got pregnant. Um, we talked a lot about what our beliefs were and the pros and the cons of the way that we were raised. And so maybe that's why I really, my, my only advice is there is no right time. We talked about it and we were really just like, if it happens, it happens. For me, I mm -hmm. wanted to make sure I got pregnant at the end of the school year. <laughs> that way I could have some time off and then not got pregnant that I, when I got pregnant, it was so I had JJ towards the end of the school year and it worked out that way the last mm -hmm. month of school. Um, although I did go back to work, but that's another story for another day. Um, yeah. I, I think just making sure, and when we got pregnant, things were perfect financially. I guess I can't say perfect, but they were great. And not that things ever got really bad, but like we were both working full time. Like it, we, we both had insurance and everything was great. We had our own, we had just moved into our own place. So I think it's just really making sure that you have what to provide. I don't really think a set amount of time. Okay. But there's never a good time. Yeah. Because, like, I know <laughs> if my parents are watching this, they're going to be like, no, no kids. Um, but I know Jacob and I want to have kids. And for him, well, and I guess for me, too, I guess the way we've talked about it is, like, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Like, we're we're not trying. We're not not trying. But at the same time, part of me is like, but I want a kid give me a baby <laughs> um and oh, because he recently re-enlisted with the marine corps for two years he has a two-year extension on his contract now is kind of the best time to get pregnant financially because there is a pay raise when you have kids like the marine corps will help pay for a lot of the doctor stuff uh during pregnancy and i have a really good OBGYN right now who actually also has pcos which is what i have so like we're in a really good spot right now to have a kid. But yeah, I think just finding <laughs> finding when when your heart feels right. Like we were yeah. like, oh, it feels like emotionally right. And I I'd be lying and I think a lot of people, a lot of women, women and men, would be lying if during pregnancy at some point they weren't like, No, this isn't what I wanted. I I'm not ready. And it yeah. may not be an overwhelming feeling. It may not be a long lasting feeling, but there does come a moment in your marriage, personally, with your friendships where you're like, am I, you know, I'm eight months. Am I really, I don't think I'm ready for this. Yeah. But you're never going to be ready. You just got to go for it. We weren't trying, but we weren't not trying. We were like, yeah, you got I pregnant like birth, super quick. Like birth you, control. yeah, it was like you quit birth control. And then like a week later, you're like, I'm pregnant. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> I was like, I oh. meanwhile, like I'm that. over here and I'm just like, I'm still not pregnant. Ah. My doctor was like, oh, it'll take you a few months. <laughs> I, I was really surprised. I didn't believe it. I took probably four pregnancy tests and I was still like, what if I'm not pregnant? Yeah. <sighs> yeah. My doctor, um, when I, I recently got diagnosed with PCOS, so I was like, hmm. I want to say it was like this spring that it happened. No, it might be a little later than that. I don't remember when it happened. You know, it might have been in like January. It was this year, though. I'm pretty sure it was in 2020. <laughs> Time is an illusion. 
Yeah, um, I think it was 2020. Yeah. Uh, my doctor, who also has PCOS, was explaining to me, like, one of the main things about PCOS is fertility issues. But it's not the same for all women. Some people have PCOS and are able to have a baby, no problem. Like her, she was able to have two kids, no issue, right? But then there are other people who are never able to have kids. And there's really no way to tell, which is, as a patient, right? That's super frustrating. Like, can you just tell me? <laughs> like, because if I can't have kids, then get rid of these ovaries that are causing me pain. Like, I, <laughs> you know? And she was like, well, it's we'd like yeah, to wait. I mean, I had Normally, a- we wait a year. Uh, she said that they wait a year before they look into other fertility options. But for her and for women with PCOS, she says that she likes to do six months of trying. But the issue is, is that we can't have a constant six months of trying because he's not here for months at a time. <laughs> a year for six months. Yeah. <laughs> we had a moment, a frustrating doctor moment, just on a side note. Um, like, I knew that spotting was normal during pregnancies but like it happened anyway like later than i had heard of it normally happening and i come to find out later um that you know it still is normal at the point of time i think it was like october um i would have been like two and a half months pregnant like like through the first trimester it's still like normal to get implantation spotting and stuff like that but like i was spotting i freaked out went to urgent care and the doctor's like is miscarriages are different for everyone don't know goodbye have a good day Go yeah on, relax yeah like a year ago i had tmi for the viewers but honestly i don't care um <laughs> uh, a year ago i had two really bad periods really bad jacob had just deployed he was gone for maybe a month right and i had terrible periods and they were right next to each other like, I'm telling you, I was wearing, like, a pad and tampon at the same time and having to change, like, every hour. But, huh? I can't hear you again. Oh, no. Uh, why? Can you hear me now? Oh, yes? dang it. No? Yay! Now, yes. Yay. Okay. Now, yeah. We're... <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> Um, there's nobody watching, so I can't ask if, like, the people can hear me, but, um, essentially, like, they were right next to each other, they were both super bad, like, to the point where I was dizzy, I couldn't drive, I didn't trust myself to drive, I could barely walk from one side of my apartment to the other, and I went to the ER, and they said, well, the last period that you had might have been a miscarriage, but there's really no way to know. That's always frustrating. And so here I am now where I can't seem to be getting pregnant and I'm, I can't help but think like if that was a miscarriage, if that was like my, like my chance to have a kid. And like, I don't even know if it was actually. I think it's better not to know. I do too. Um, but still hard nonetheless. Yeah. I'm just kind of like, mm, I wish there was a way to know, you know, like a definitive answer of whether or not I can have kids would be nice. Yeah. <sighs> I, I do think that tragedy it, it it sounds so bad because it's never fun to go through that tragedy but mm-hmm. I do think that tragedy is one of the best things to help you grow closer because you see that it's not it, it's not that it's a good thing but it's great to see who that person is at their worst um, yeah it, it's I, I would not wish it on anybody, but to go through some type of hardship. And for us, like we, my aunt died like right when we got engaged. So we, we got to go through that kind of uh, grief together. Um, and it's important to go through different kinds of emotional states before you fully commit to somebody. Uh, but yeah, I I have a few friends who were a bit along in their pregnancies before they uh had a miscarriage and it's I'm happy I don't know for sure because I can I can easily say that it wasn't ignorance is bliss yeah I was very lucky that it was probably just implantation spotting but I know that there are people who believe that like if you do certain things you can stop a miscarriage from fully happening there's like warning signs some people believe 
Mm. And who knows, that could have been what it was. I caught it early enough and I was pretty much on some form of bed rest Hi, the entire nine months. She's so pretty. She looks so soft. She is. Do you hear her purring? <laughs> Clyde doesn't purr. Um, well, I think we should wrap up the video here because I do have a pre-production meeting I need to get ready for. Uh, and somebody obviously wants my attention. <laughs> you know, sometimes I'm like, I'm so sad I don't have a baby. But then she comes and she shows up and is like, you don't need personal space. <laughs> I can't even go to the bathroom by myself at my mom's mm. house because there's a gap like this big and JJ will crawl over to the bathroom and he'll stick his hands hi 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 and I'm like oh my kid <laughs> she's such a sweetie all right Hello. well we should wrap up this video because I also need to eat I'm like hungry my stomach's been rebelling <laughs> I'm, I'm hungry I just miss people <laughs> so it's great to talk yes all right, well, that is it for this video. As always, you can connect with me online at P underscore Stephanie Jean. Links are down below. Krista's links to her YouTube channel, TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram are also down below. Um, and I hope you guys are all having a great day, and I'll see you in another June tube video tomorrow. Love you, bye! bye. <laughs>